Austin, I think I gave you uh, one more question, and I'll, I'll yes, kind of repeat that one. Singleness, singleness which yes. is, um, th thank you for sending in this question. It's really important because some of us are single. We don't want to be. We think we're, you know, we're, we're missing out on, um, you know, the best life. And, and one thing to think about is that, that Jesus was single, and he was the most fully alive human that there's ever been, right? That Jesus, as far as we, you know, never had a romantic, well, we know, never had a romantic relationship. He, he died a virgin. Uh, he was the fullest human being that there ever was. So, you know, I think that we hear a lot say, well, if you're single, you're not really experiencing what it really means to be human. Say, so we have to dismiss that because of the example of Jesus. Uh, the second thing is, is I think singleness is more of a problem in a culture like ours where we have very weak idea of friendship, that we have um, distorted and elevated sexual activity as kind of the be all end all at the expense of genuine friendship. And, and Jamie Norton, who's here, the service, she's been really helpful to me saying, what's the really meaning of intimacy? Right, you're in high school and the word intimacy comes up, your buddies start to giggle because intimacy, we've said, oh, that means sex. You said, that's not what the word means. A better tra translation would be in to me see. That's what Jamie teaches us. And I think that's really helpful to say, is a lot of the problem with singleness is that our culture says sex is everything and friendship is very shallow. And so the Bible actually dignifies friendship and says you can have real intimate, fulfilling friendships. And you know what? Sex isn't all that it's made to be. And I, I think in the first hour I said our uh, feelings of sexual satisfaction, while we have more and more options, if you will, while we're more and more libertine in that area, satisfaction according to the surveys is going lower and lower. And so I think my response to that, you're single, you don't want to be, to, to say, well, remember the example of Jesus. He was very fulfilled. How about the role of friendships in your life? Also, um, you know, there, there is some truth to being married brings a different set of challenges. I remember I was at this conference and there was a Bible teacher, a Bible professor, uh, she was from Wheaton College. She had four little kids and one little line in her talk, I, I'll remember more of the talk than just this, but she says, you know, all my fantasies these days are about being single. And she kind of said it as, a, but I knew what she meant. She's like, I've got this really busy life. And, I and so to, to say, well, it, it's not, well, maybe you want to be in a romantic relationship. It's not that, that, you know, now you've arrived and there's, you know, now, now everything's well with the world, but rather that has its own set of challenges and its own set of burdens. Uh, but to say God knows what he's doing, um, that we're all here for a, a short period of time, even though it doesn't seem that on a day-to-day -day basis, so why I'm gonna live and, and do what God's called me to do, uh, recognizing that my real fulfillment and, and identity is being in Christ, whether single or married. Excellent. Some of the people have had a really big impact in Mary's and, and my journey have been uh, single. And I just love how you said you can be complete as a single person. You, you're not waiting like you're half there until you get married. But that uh, the Apostle Paul himself says, I, I wish you all were like I were, single, you know, because of his, uh, the ability to just uh, uh, a sense of single-mindedness.